Hello and welcome to Community Corner. My name is Rhett Behrens. I'm a developer evangelist with the Zero API team, and today we're going to be discussing webhook events in Zero. Our question today comes from Ruan, who is building an integration and needs a way of notifying the user when their invoices are being marked as paid. Um, and originally, they were querying the Zero API for each record of an invoice they had in their integration. Uh, on a regular basis. And this was eating into their API rate limits quite a bit. Um, so they were looking at invoice webhooks as a solution, um, which is definitely the way you'd wanna go about this. This way you're only querying for invoices that have been updated and you're only doing so when zero tells you they've been updated. But what they've noticed is that the event that's returned from zero doesn't tell you what about that invoice has been updated. So let's get into webhook events and discuss what they are and what they aren't. So a webhook allows you to subscribe to certain events that occur in Zero. And at the time of this recording, uh, that's limited to invoices and contacts. Um, so specifically, we're looking at uh, events being emitted if a contact or an invoice is created and if a contact or an invoice is updated. Now, the event that's emitted would include, um, in the form of a JSON payload, the events array, the last event sequence, the first event sequence, and the entropy. Um, and each event in the events array consists of a resource URL, resource ID, event date, event type, event category, tenant ID, and tenant type. Uh, you can see here the example payload where the resource URL will tell you what API endpoint and what resource ID you need to include in order to request that object. Um, the standalone resource ID, uh, the event type, uh, in this example uh, instance, it's update, and the event category, in this case, contact. So a webhook is simply a notification that something has happened to a specific entity, whether it's a contact or an invoice. Um, and within that notification, it's telling you specifically which entity by ID, um, and it's telling you where you need to go look for it in terms of the API URL that you need to enter with that ID. Um, but it is not going to tell you what it was that changed about that entity. Uh, to determine what it was that changed, you need to make that subsequent get call to review the details of that uh, record against whichever record you had previously. All right, so we've discussed what a zero webhook event is and isn't. Uh, now let's look at implementing one in our project. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm gonna be using the zero node OAuth2 app that's available on our GitHub. And to get started, we're gonna go into the developer portal and select the project that we're working with. I'm gonna to go to the webhooks tab. And for this demonstration, I want to notify my app about changes to invoices. Uh, and I need to provide a secure public URL to send webhook notifications to. Uh, and to do that uh, and test locally, I'm gonna use ingrok. I'm gonna generate a public URL that will tunnel to my local host. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL here. And I'm going to define the endpoint that I wanna send webhook notifications to as webhooks. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this webhook key in my env file here. All right, let's go ahead and look at the code that actually needs to be implemented in order to handle zero webhook events in our project. The first thing I'm gonna do, since I'm using body parser in this node and express project, is tell body parser that for the webhooks endpoint, uh, I don't wanna modify or parse that incoming request body. I wanna keep it raw. Uh, and we'll get into this in a minute. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually define the webhooks endpoint. So for my webhooks endpoint, um, I'm just gonna take the incoming request body uh, and send it to a method that verifies the webhook event signature. And if the method returns true, then I'll respond to zero with a 200 status. If it returns false, uh, I'll respond to zero with 401. So let's get into what zero is looking for uh, in the response. 
So first of all, I need to respond with 200 OK status, uh, and that would be assuming that the signature is valid. Um, I need to not return a body in the response. I need to not return any cookies in the response headers. Uh, and if the signature is invalid, I need to return a 401 unauthorized. What do I mean by signature is valid or invalid? So let's go take a look at verify webhook event signature real quick. So verify webhook event signature is going to compute a signature using our webhook key that was generated when we uh, created the webhook in the developer portal. Uh, and it's going to hash that against the incoming raw body from zero. Um, and if it's signed correctly, uh, it will actually match the provided signature in the header from the request. If it's signed incorrectly, um, it's not gonna match. And so this will dictate whether we return true or false and therefore dictate whether we return 200 or 401. And that comes into play in the intent to receive step. So before we can actually get webhook event notifications about changes to invoices, um, we need to prove to Zero that we are going to handle uh, these events the way that Zero expects. That is uh, to verify a signature and return 200 or 401. So let's go ahead and start up this project and uh, request these intent to receive uh, requests. So we're going to go ahead and click on send intent to receive. And not only will you see these events coming in in the terminal here, uh, you see the actual JSON, you see the unmodified raw body, and here's what the event looks like. Um, and then you can also see in Ingrok uh, returning 401 or 200. And what Zero is doing for intent to receive and signature verification and validating that we're doing that correctly, so we send four requests and only one of them is signed correctly. So it's expecting that you'll return three 401s and one 200. Uh, and now that we've done this correctly, if I refresh this page, you'll see that now my status is updated from uh, send intent to receive to OK. So now that we've done that, let's go actually create uh, an invoice in zero. I'm going to go ahead and save this just as a draft, though. And while that's happening, wait a minute, and we should see uh, another request come through Ingrok uh, with a 200 um, response. And we'll also see the uh, actual webhook event here uh, with the resource URL, the resource ID, uh, the event type, we can see that I created um, specifically an event category of invoice. Um, we can see the tenant ID uh, associated with that. So that represents uh, the demo company um, in my case. And you can see here that signature pass, this is from zero. So now let me go, go ahead and modify the invoice that I just created. I'm going to add a new line. I want another item on this invoice. Um, we're going to do like a six pack of golf balls. And I'll go ahead and approve it now. And in a moment here, you should see another request come in with another 200 response, uh, as well as another event. Yep. So now we have an updated invoice and you'll see that the resource ID here matches the resource ID here. So this is all well and good. We're getting the webhook event notifications um, correctly. Uh, but as was pointed out in the community corner post, um, the update's not telling me what's changed, right? So let's say my app integration um, upon initial connection pulls all existing invoices from zero. Uh, and then I want to keep things in sync. 
um, well, the webhook that sends events for newly created invoices would tell me that uh, I need to make a get request for that newly created invoice to add it to my database. Um, and then let's say my app needs to know or notify, notify my user uh, when the invoice is marked paid. Well, I'm going to get this update event, but it's not going to say what changed about the invoice. Um, so anytime I got an update event, assuming I already had that invoice in my database to compare against, uh, I'd want to make another get request for this updated uh, invoice and compare what fields actually changed. Um, the webhook doesn't tell you that itself, so you still have to do some follow-up steps to accomplish uh, follow-up actions depending on what it is you're trying to do by knowing that an invoice is created or updated. And that sums it up for webhooks. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you'd like to see more from myself and the DE team, please click subscribe. If you're building something awesome using webhooks, shout it out in the comments. And if you've got questions, comments, or concerns, please email api at zero.com. Thanks again. Have a great day.